Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from Interest.co.nz and welcome to another in our series of our Double Shot interviews. This is where we speak to a business leader or a minister about what's happening in the global economy, what's happening in the local economy, what's happening to investments, to interest rates, house prices, all that sort of thing. Today we have David Colvin, who is the Chief Executive of NZ Mint. We're going to talk about gold, which we find is quite a topical <laughs> subject and popular on our site. David, uh, can you talk about uh, what's happening with uh, gold sales out of New Zealand? Something that surprised me a bit, that NZ Mint actually sells to the likes of, of Russia. What's, what's the story there? Hmm. Look, look, there's two elements to this. The, the first element is our normal bullion exchange. We're certainly getting a, a lot of sales internationally, uh, particularly out of the, the US from a, a gold bullion uh, investment perspective. But when you mention Russia, this is the division of the business that is about commemorative, limited edition, proof quality, legal tender coins. And, and the Russian market has been a growing market over the last uh, uh, really five or six years. It's been a big investment for us to penetrate the market. But in the last uh, 12 months, our revenues were in excess of uh, $20 million into the Eastern Euro European market, of which 90% of that was Russian. Well, why do the Russians want New Zealand gold and silver? Well, predominantly it's because of the design features and the quality of our coins. The, uh, the quality some, has been... I have indeed. In fact, here's an example. It is um, a design around the Sherlock Holmes edition. And Sherlock Holmes is a very famous uh, movie, believe it or not, in Russia. And in fact, the, the theme of these coins, there is a series of four of them, uh, are with the, um, uh, the actors on these coins. So they're actually painted on the, the coins in a very high quality uh, presentation here. These coins are then sold over the counter of a bank. In fact, our largest customer is uh, Spurbank, which if you multiplied all the banks in Australia and New Zealand together and multiplied them by a factor of two or three, you've got the size of this bank. And, and you're selling these coins through those banks and they're buying them because of the, the, uh, the type of silver and the, the way that you've produced them. Uh, what about the, the New Zealandness of it? Do you, do you manage to sell any sort of New Zealand type coins? Yeah, look, look what we do. We do. The, um, the, the first themed editions that they're interested in are, are Russian themes like Sherlock Holmes or perhaps uh, famous trains or, or famous cars, motorcycles, etc. But they are also interested in some of the generic themes, such as when you're coming up to uh, the, the year of the Luna. So la last year, um, the uh, Luna Tiger was very, very popular. And also Valentine's Day, believe it or not. Uh, the theme that we put together, which is love, uh, love is Precious, <laughs> they, they buy these coins by the thousands, li literally. Uh, the New Zealand themed coins, less or so. Uh, we, we have had some birds, for example, uh, that, that have sold. But they do seem to like more their, their own themes and areas of interest that they can, uh, they can associate with. But they are produced in New Zealand. The, the precious metal is obviously very important, it's 0.999 pure, so there is the investment value of that, but it is the limited edition feature that is being uh, attractive across the counter in these banks. And in, in Russia, I imagine with the turmoil they've had over the last couple of decades with their financial system, in fact all of Eastern Europe, there must be a, 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 a quite a bit of demand in the background for something that's more solid than, let's say, your money in a bank account? Absolutely. I think as we've seen the, the affluence of uh, the, the medium to upper class Russian and their discretionary money and spend, they've been very discerning when it comes to what they're going to invest their money in. Really, share markets aren't considered to be anything that they would put their investment into. But when it comes to precious metal, yes, gold and silver, they really uh, relate to it. And when it comes to a commemorative limited edition that can be given as a gift and considered to be of value, and it also increases in value, and we've got some, some wonderful success stories there as well, it becomes very much a, a safe haven, I think, for investment for the average to upper class person. I was just looking at some research before on, on Russia. It's actually a large gold producer, the fifth largest in the mm. world, but their supply has been falling in the last year or so, down about 10%. And this issue of uh, peak gold, I'm interested in. Um, what, what are you seeing? You must watch the trends for gold production quite closely. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are you seeing out there in terms of gold production, the balance between supply and demand? Look, look I think the balance is, is pretty well kept at the moment. 
supply and demand balance is, is there. We have seen obviously an increase in the value of gold over, over recent times, but I think overall the balance is pretty solid and uh, there doesn't appear to be any concerns as far as production is concerned, at least in the short term. That could change though. Yes. Uh, also looking at um, sales of gold uh, in New Zealand over the last couple of years with the global financial crisis, a lot of discussion about um, uh, banks printing money. Uh, what have you seen in the last couple of years with uh, interest in, in gold and trading of gold, um, people buying it? What, what's happening out there? I think it's been an awareness factor. People have considered uh, five years ago, for example, that investing in gold was, was really something to the very wealthy and very difficult to get access to. Uh, over the last uh, few years, of course, the uh, communication and the ability of people to get access to gold has been improved. And I think New Zealand Mint has been a part of that factor in terms of its uh, promotion and ability for people to come in and buy physical gold. So it is awareness and it's also the reality now that as discerning investors look at some of the riskier invest investments they've had in the past, whether it be funds or, or share market that they perhaps have become a little bit concerned about, that the flight to a safe haven of gold investment from a longer term perspective is very attractive and it is improving and increasing. Because you've got to get over the hurdle that people don't get an interest return on their gold. There, there is that. There absolutely is that. And, and that's why if people do take a, a long-term view and if they look at the past trends, they don't necessarily dictate the future trends, but the past trends do show very clearly that an investment strategy, and we're not advocating you should invest all of your funds in, in gold. Maybe it's only 5 or 10% of your portfolio, but in doing so, you can demonstrate by looking at the past that it has outperformed almost every other uh, investment asset. Uh, whether it will do that in the future is another thing. So having a small proportion of your portfolio in gold is a smart thing to do. And it all uh, depends on this debate about inflation versus deflation. Uh, fascinating topic huh. at the moment. Are we going to have inflation because of what appears to be a lot of money printing? Mm. Or do we actually face deflation because of uh, the real problems on financial markets, banks aren't lending so much, and as we've seen in, the, in Japan and in parts of Europe, there's a real pressure mm. downwards on prices. How would gold fare if we saw a long-term period of uh, deflation? Yeah, look, that's an interesting question, and I think there, there's a number of different views on that. Um, naturally, you would say if there was deflation, uh, the price of gold may become very stagnant for a period of time. But, but equally then, I, I think it's, it's that whole balanced portfolio issue again. Uh, I think there's a great opportunity for people today who are not investing in gold to move some of their investments out of other assets into gold. Now if that happens, that might mean that the balance, even in a deflationary environment, means that more people are starting to find an investment in gold does make sense. Uh, that's the way I think it will go. Certainly I see the, the, the baby boomer generation and self-managed super funds, etc., as being a primary opportunity for investment in gold, which would support that strategy. And a lot of people in the States and others, other places are investing in gold through exchange-traded funds. Yes. What's the, what's the, the toss-up there? Exchange-traded funds or actually getting your hands on the stuff? What, why would you do one or not the other? Look, look as much as anything, I think it's a little bit uh, psychological. Uh, it's like, why do you want to buy a, um, a rental property? Because you can go drive past it and see it. Uh, when it comes to exchange-traded funds, you're right, you're, you're investing in a bit of paper. Uh, there have been some stories that are a little bit concerning where perhaps the, those ETFs may not be backed sufficiently by the physical gold. So if there was a real downturn, you know, do I lose my money? Look, I think it comes down to a personal preference. But we're seeing a lot of people like to know that if they want to turn up at New Zealand Mint, they can get the physical gold and take it home and put it under their mattress if that's what they want to do. Great. Well, there we have it. David Colvin, the CEO of New Zealand Mint, talking there about gold. That's another in our series of double-shot interviews.